That was the research group. So we're going to get into the, the, the talk at hand. I'm not going to make any reference to God, any reference to intelligent designer any, or anything. I'm just going to allow science to critique the science. What do we have to say about origin of life? What does science tell us? What, what can we infer here? And so by choice, I am not going to mention God because if I mention God to talk about this, it's not a real talk. All right, this pure scientific talk, this would work in, in, any, in any medical school, in, in, in any chemistry department. Next slide. So this is a cell. What is the origin of life? How do you get a cell like this? What is the origin of something like this? This is an amazing machine. A cell is an amazing machine. It's not just a blob of protoplasm. Every day, it gets harder to have the origin of life, to come up with a scenario because the origin of life becomes more and more complex every day. A cell is a factory. It has the lipid bilayer, which is extremely selective to let certain things in and not other things. It has all of this substructure in here, these little areas where, 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 where energy is, is, is made in here. It has these microtubules which can form so you can move matter from point A to point B. If you go to a factory, what you see is you see these overhead hanging machines that are moving materials from point A to point B. In, 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 in these systems. And the way they do this is, is they build these racks. But the same thing happens in a cell. You get these microtubules to move material from point A to point B. And then as soon as the material is done moving, the microtubule breaks down and then assembles some other place. You say, well, why doesn't it leave it there? Because then the cell would become too rigid. So it just rebuilds it. It's just amazing factory what's happening in a cell. This is what we have to make. If we want to have origin of life, you got to start here. You don't start here. You start with a single cell. Just build a single cell. That's what we have to do in origin of life. Nobody has ever done this. If you've been taught that simple forms of life have been made, that is a lie that you are believing. Somebody told you a lie. That has never been done. Next slide. Organisms care about life. Molecules don't care. Chemistry, on the contrary, is utterly indifferent to life. Without a biologically derived entity acting upon them, molecules have never been shown to evolve toward life. Never. Molecules don't care about life. They don't know anything about moving toward life. They have no brain. Organisms want to move toward life and keep life going. Molecules don't care about life. Nobody has ever seen molecules assemble toward life. Never. It doesn't happen without a biological entity working on them. I asked all my colleagues, can you show me an example of this? Of, of molecules moving toward order. Moving toward an ordered system where you have a non-regular assembly. Regular assembly is like AAAA or ABAB. That you can get pure thermodynamic assembly. But non-order assembly is a non-regular pattern. That's what you have in DNA. We know from computer science you have to have non-regular patterns in order to have complexity for living systems. And I asked my colleagues, do you have any example of molecules without a biological entity acting upon them moving in, in, in to, to give an ordered assembly that is a non-regular pattern? And they sent me papers where chemists have taken molecules and assembled them in that way. I said, non-biological entity. You can't have a human doing this. Molecules don't move toward life. Well, even if you want to have molecules move toward life and you have human beings working upon them, can the human beings do it? And the answer is no. Next slide. So, almost every chemical synthesis experiment in origin of life research can be summed up by a protocol analogous to this. You, they purchase chemicals generally in high purity from a chemical company. All right, so that's what they do. They first purchase the chemicals. They mix those chemicals together in water in high concentrations in a specific order under some set of carefully devised conditions in a modern lab. Then they can obtain a mixture of compounds that have a resemblance to one or more, more of the basic four classes of chemicals needed for life. So what you need for life is you need carbohydrates, nucleic acids, amino acids, and lipids. That's what we know. All life we know composes those four building blocks. So they try to make those four building blocks. Then they publish a paper making bold assertions about origin of life from these functionless crude mixtures of stereochemically scrambled intermediates, much like Miller did in 1952. Nothing has changed in 66 years. Nothing. Nothing's changed. Exactly where we were in 1952 is exactly where we have remained. Think about what's been done in science in the past 60 years. Think about 
how we have now satellite connectivity. Remember, in 1952, there had never been a satellite. Now we have satellite connectivity. We have cell phones. We have structure of DNA. We can manipulate D DNA structure. Nothing has changed in origin of life studies in 66 years. That's important to realize. Then you engage with the ever, ever gullible press to dial up the knob of unjustified extrapolations, watch the mesmerized layperson exclaim, you see, scientists understand how life formed. Then you encourage a generation of science textbook writers to make colorful, deceptive cartoons of raw chemicals assembling from cells, which then emerge as slithering creatures from a prehistoric pond. That is exactly what is done every one of their experiments. <clears throat> It's all done like this. Every one of their experiments can be fit into this. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to go back and a bunch of you are going to send me articles. Look at this. These people have made life, haven't they? It fits into this. Trust me. It fits into this. Every one of them. Next slide. 